the O'Halloran. With your host, Brian O'Halloran. And his guest tonight, the illustrious, talented actress Marilyn Gigliotti. And here he is, Brian O'Halloran. What's up, what's up, what's up? Thank you, Diana. Diana Devlin, everyone. Sheila should be sitting in tonight. If you want to lean in over this way, Diana, the camera. There she is. I'm leaning forward. She's not that tiny. She is that tiny. Let's be honest. So, yeah, so uh, this is it. This is the O'Hallorant. Um, it took a, uh, a worldwide, I guess, pandemic for uh, people to jump on this. So, for me to jump on this. So, um, hope everybody out there is doing well. I hope uh, that people are uh, are safe. I want to uh, give a big shout out to all the uh, first responders out there. Thank you. And to all the grocers and all the um, truck drivers and all the scientists and lab techs who are also going through and putting our, uh, our tests through who need tests, if you can get tests. For those in areas that uh, haven't seen the uh, overwhelming uh, uh, infection rate that over here on the upper northeast is getting, uh, trust me, it's coming. It's coming and it's not going to be fun. Um, I've lost uh, three people that I've known, uh, an actor just yesterday, and uh, we've also lost some really greats in the music world as well. So uh, it's sad to see, but I, I want to say thank you to all of you. Now, look, I'm just here going to be doing a, a fun kind of take your mind off kind of show. I'm not going to get into anything deep and political, or at least not yet. I'm not, I haven't gotten that angry just as of yet. There'll be kind of mini rants, I guess you could say. Um, but uh, I want to say hello to everybody. We got a uh, so far, 45 viewers on Facebook. Thank you so much. That's awesome. And uh, we have quite a few people uh, on uh, YouTube as well. So uh, I'm going to get into it here in a few uh, with uh, Marilyn Gigliotti. I just want to move so that Diane is uh, just checking in and stuff. Uh, Boots is there you go. Good to see you, Boots. All right. Yeah, it's this way. Oops. There you go. Our puppy's so cute. Hi, Boots. You Ooh. can't see it? No, I can I can see it now. But cool. Very cool. So, how's everybody doing? I can see everybody out there is uh I can see the comments coming in here. A huge shout out. That's right. Thank you, buddy. Huge shout out to the essential workers who way deserve more than 15 bucks an hour. You are right, Mr. Big Boss. So thank you for that. There she is, Boots. Hey, Scott Schiaffo, that's right. You recognize the song. That is correct. Boots gets a, a bonus bonus point because uh, the good old Chuli's gum guy himself, Mr. Scott Schiaffo, I, I grabbed music from uh, his album. He's a good friend and uh, really a really, really great guy. And uh, I'm glad that uh, he's been really supportive of all this. And I, and I want to say that uh, Scott has been um, – has been nothing but uh, a gentleman. And if anybody wants to catch more of Scott's music, scottchiaffo.com. The album that's on Amazon right now is the Shoestring Serenade. We're going to be playing a couple more cuts off of this album a little bit later. I just um, realized I didn't put any earplugs. I know. she's not. She's, I, I get, she was not here for rehearsal. Oop. And now she's knocking things over. So <laughs> this is what happens when you're dealing with first-timers. First now don't tangle the wire. I know. It's a whole big thing down here. All right. So uh, we're going to get to our guest. She's been waiting long enough. Uh, I was her uh, 37th, but tonight she's my first, meaning my first guest. Please, everybody, welcome with a huge, huge, huge round of applause in your own homes, Miss uh, Marilyn Gigliotti. Let me give hi. Hi. <laughs> I, I have to say that I'm very, very honored that you considered me to have on your as your first guest well you know got to do what i gotta do give some love <laughs> yeah, i know you were not busy and uh i yeah. know that i wasn't busy um, <laughs> and you you've heard me uh talk about me doing a my own podcast and uh streamcast for, for like week. ever <laughs> so uh being trapped in a house and having other people trapped in their house i think is that well if i'm not going to do it now when 
you know, at my funeral, I'll have a taped podcast at my funeral. Yeah. I mean, cause what this is, is it two years in the making or three? I think it's almost three. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So people yeah, it's about it. damn time. <laughs> people were ranting at me about my Ohala rant. So um, <laughs> it's, good, it's good to have you. I'm excited to be here. I hope that wasn't too loud. It's like my voice gets very pitchy. <laughs> no, I, I, I can't control your volume. I can mute you, but I can't yeah. uh, lower your volume. So. Well, I, I'm pretty far away from the mic as well. Yeah, so. you're good. And you're us good. usually with this mic is when I'm doing um, audio books, which has been a while, actually. I have to be right on top of it. Um, so anyway. What kind of audio books? Er erotica? No, not erotica. And romances. Um, no, actually, let's see. There have been there's <laughs> there's one which was my first one. I mean, it's not the best. I will say I will admit that it was not the best because um, it was my first. Uh, but it's called the plague. The Very apropos. What? Totally top <laughs> of folks. I did not. This was not a setup. No. <laughs> one that brought up the audio book. Did not. Was not even going to get into audio books. Yeah. So. No. <laughs> Weird. The yeah. Plague. So yeah. uh, have you been, do you have a copy of it? Have you been referring it back to, for like skills and whatnot? Uh, no. Uh, <laughs> I, well, I have the copy that I had to read uh, for the book, you know, for the right. audio. Did any hints out of it? Did you any, like, you know, how to fillet street rat? I uh, know. <laughs> no. And it's been so long since I read it anyway. So, um, and then two other ones are kind of on the thriller side um, of possession of an item um, and then the other ones, uh, yeah. <laughs> Sounds like a I, lot of good things. <laughs> and then the other one is, yeah. is, uh, has to do with, um, oh my God, vampire. I can't even remember. See, I can't remember. And then another, another the, the last one, the fourth one is, uh, it's more for like a teen girl type of See, story. Vampire. Vampires are always sucking things. I mean, it just, <laughs> it never ends with you. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> we've, we've obviously known each other for going on almost 26 years now. Yeah. The two of us together in a candid shot behind the counter. Mm -hmm. You know, as people who uh, are new to it, new to the game are yeah, just 27, 27. Yeah. 27 years or so. Fun so, times. She's not, I have a mic set up for her and she's not even leaning into it. <laughs> uh, it works. <laughs> Uh, everybody always wants to talk about uh, this scene is probably one of their most famous scenes that I'm yeah. sure uh, couples have always uh, wanted to uh, talk about yep. you know, wh what number were they? <laughs> uh, they always want to be number 38. <laughs> yeah. I'm so sorry that you <laughs> have to be getting, you know, are, Hey, are you even, you know, I get, are you even supposed to be here today? Yeah. You, you poor thing. You get screamed at you. Hey, try not to suck any dick on the way through the parking lot. Yeah. Oh, by the way, for my, okay, though. It's okay. Were, yeah, right. If you're a fan of mine and, and Marilyn's, you know that we're from movies that are rated R. So some of the language and some of the um, subject matter may get a little uh, blue, as they would say in the old days, or as the as the as the kids would say today. I don't know, vulgar. I don't know. Anyway, I don't know what the kids are. I don't have kids, so I don't know. What kids. Well, no. yeah, mine are grown. It's like <laughs> once again, she's like in my ear when I have headphones on, saying things. <laughs> There for to speak into. It doesn't work. It doesn't work to to say it into your ear and it'll come through your microphone. I know you you yeah. do, you have no career in radio or podcasting. <laughs> I mean. That's how everybody. Didn't you ever see like Howard Stern and uh, Robin? Robin was in a separate wing of the whole studio, like yeah. separate room. That's how they and yet they got along and dominated the world. Um, so you'll catch on. You'll catch on to it. <laughs> no. Anyway. Um, <laughs> So, yeah, so, uh, hey, Amy Stark, she's here, our good friend uh, from Staten Island days and has moved on. So Amy says hello to Di. Hi, Amy. Where's Finn? Exactly. Wait a minute. Finn's on. Oh, is that on YouTube? Uh, no, this is on, uh, is it popping up on your screen? I see, yes, but I don't see Amy. I don't know. No, it's on Facebook. These are a lot of Facebook people. Uh, we oh, have, okay. Uh, like well, them. okay, yeah, but I... What comes up on uh, on ours? Is that from Facebook? Yeah, these are Facebook. You'll see the little okay. logo at the bottom that says an app. Oh, right. Okay. Right. And then if it's the red play button, it'll be uh, also uh, YouTube. So oh, CJ, okay. CJ, number 27. What? That's not even the right number, sir. But thanks for coming by. Hey, Nick. Nick from 
the Jane Silent Bob movies. Yes. Kid that are trying to scope uh, uh, to catch some weed from uh, Jay and Silent <laughs> Bob. He was also in the new uh, Jane Silent Bob reboot. He's watching. Good. Thank you for supporting. My good friend Tom Kanan down in uh, down in Mississippi, putting the plague on the list now. Oh, well, there you go. Mao, man, you, you've you've said you've had one drink and you're already misspelling Mao. You mean now? <laughs> and his wife is also watching. There is Tom. There's Amber, <laughs> and their wonderful daughter Willow. She has a wonderful uh, website. And uh, uh, oh, there's uh, Joe Levey Jr. He's a manager of an ambulance company in Buffalo, New York. Oh, thank uh, you. Oh. Yeah. Thank you, Scott Meany. Great artist. If everybody wants to see any Scott Meany's work, he's done some really good stuff. He's drawn both myself and Marilyn Giglio. Yes. He also, I believe, drew the uh, the cover to uh, Scott Schiaffo's book. That's right. Good to see you. Marcus, Marcus Cook, good. good to see you as well. Sucks that we're all sucks they stopped haircuts yes it does suck for her that <laughs> they haircuts so uh now that you have free time and you're not doing haircuts right now and you're just cringing when you're seeing all put on uh their tiktok <laughs> and their youtube and and trying to cut hair and different things yeah i mean you know cutting wise uh they'll just have to wait for it to grow out mm. color wise you know if it's too dark you know, then there's a bleaching to have to be done, and and uh, um, and then just if turn down the lights, just turn down the lights. <laughs> but then if they take bleach to their hair, it's like I hope you don't overprocess because I can't oh. do much about that. <laughs> Save the bleach for some thing, not the yeah. hair. Yeah, not the bleach. You don't need it. Okay, just mm -hmm. fine. Wear hats. Soon we're all going to be wearing complete hajib anyway to keep ourselves clean, to be honest with you. See, Muslims had it right. And they yeah. just like, away from germs, don't drink alcohol. And, uh, you know, that's the way yeah. it works. And, I mean, if you, know what, if you know what you're doing, it's yeah. okay. Hmm. But if you don't have an inkling as to what you're doing, put it down. See, this is where Floby, do you remember Floby? Oh, my God, Yeah. <laughs> So if the Floby uh, manufacturers didn't have to start making ventilators, uh, we'd probably have really good sales of the Floby hair cutting system. Yeah. Um, so let's, it, start, let's talk about your history besides doing hair. Mm -hmm. you've, uh, you've got quite a few different genres of film. You're not just a, uh, a one trick pony when it comes to comedy and, and just clerks. I mean, you've done some really fun and interesting stuff. We have here uh, Road War, Rogue Warrior Robot Fighter. Yeah. And the, you as a badass. Look at you, like with a sniper rifle. <laughs> this is really cool. And who's oh. your co-star there? What? Who's your co-star there? So that is Tracy Birdsall. Um, so she's a good friend. I've known her out here for a few years. Um, but uh, she's a very, very good friend of the director, uh, Neil Johnson. Um, so Rogue Warrior Robot Fighter is the third film that I've worked with him on. Um, and I always have a lot of fun and he always gave, gives me like really awesome roles to play as well. Um, but yeah, I mean, I have done quite a few genres and that's done on purpose. Uh, I, I tried, to, yes, but I, I, I try to look for different types of movies to be able to work on so that I can show the range and, you know, get out of that typecasting that uh, uh, Hollywood likes to put you in. <laughs> yeah, it's always fun when friends come on and they have nothing to say, but hey, love something about Mary Hairdo, Brian Long. Yes, that's <laughs> uh, filmmaker David Madison, uh, known from uh, the film Mr. Hush and his documentary Middle Village. I know he's now working on a, uh, a documentary about these times here uh, and people being home. So uh, oh, okay. check out his website or his Facebook page about Mr. Hush. And that'll link you to his uh, story about um, this coronavirus. Thank you for, for watching, David. Um, so you, you also you kind of stuck with this genre in a weird way, because then uh, I see here you have a film called uh, Alien Armageddon. Well, that's the first one that I did with Neil. Wow. Um, and Neil's genre of films are all sci-fi. Um, always the most fun to do. Uh, I don't know if you've gotten to do any sci-fi, but uh, 
I, I feel like sci-fi is the genre that has many genres within. Oh yeah, of course. Sci-fi, so, sci-fi superhero, sci-fi monster movie, yeah. sci-fi romantic comedy. So if you always want to do, so if you want to kind of do a genre, say, it, you know, be horror or comedy or drama, it's like you can do all of those within the sci-fi genre. So mm. I, I, that's what I find interesting about sci-fi in itself. Um, but here, the, you huh? have a, but look at this. This is from the film. Look at you yes. with the, like Ripley. You look like Ripley from Aliens. <laughs> Um, well, yeah, I, I definitely, definitely did not play a Ripley type of character in this though. That's for this. It's like, I just kind of put myself in there because I was doing behind the scenes photography for this, um, as well as playing a character. Um, and I think I sent you the photo, um, which is not a lovely scene. I gotta, I, I will admit, uh, it, it kind of is a little disturbing the scene that I, that I do in this. <laughs> And going back to uh, Starship Rising, there you go. You were, uh, let me do this full screen here. That's you, looked, uh, you really look like you're ready to uh, to be on, you know, one of the Star Trek episodes or one of the the new uh, Mandalorian. You you have a serious look there. That would be a pretty awesome. It's like I wish I was as young as I was then, though. <laughs> uh, well, don't we all? <laughs> and, uh, you know what? It, what's great about it is like um, you don't just stick to uh, feature films. I mean, you work with when you get really good work. You like to work with uh, people who maybe just have a short subject, and then this is this one here, Neighbors. Tell us well, a little bit, about Neighbors. Neighbors was actually a thesis film for I think it was UCLA. I can't, right on. I can't remember, but I mean, and it's. Uh, at a certain point, I pretty much stopped doing student films um, because I, you know, usually you kind of do them to get a reel, and I'm like, I didn't, I didn't need it for my reel. Um, but this one was sent to me, and it was playing the lead role, and it was just a really compelling story. So I really liked it, and I was really like, oh yeah, I definitely want to do this one. Um, so. Uh, Unfortunately, you know, with short stories, it's like you, they're not out there um, or they don't get to go out. I do have it. I don't know that I'm allowed to actually put it out there. Well, you know, it's, it's always about what uh, what can be done. Hey, we got a good yeah. friend joining us. We have uh, Scott Chiaffo. Zing! Zing! Hi, Scott. Scott is definitely uh, the man. He's uh, provided me with all the music that I, I'll be using during this whole uh uh, continuing broadcast. Oh, a great friend uh, from the San Francisco area is out as, here as well. Ricky G, Rick G, uh, he's an editor and a teacher up in the uh, films up in the uh, in the Bay Area. Mm -hmm. I've named the school outright. I'm sure he'll he'll text it to me here in a second. But student films ring a bell. Yes, we worked on a a show for um, cable out in California when I was living out there for a short period of time, lived at his house um, called the Student Film Network, and I was the host. And we had some really cool uh, footage from different things. But thank you for joining us, Rick. Hey, Rick. How's Pepper? Pepper is his border collie. He always loves border collies. They're the smartest. They're the smartest. Um, ah, Ernie just came on. <laughs> he just go. woke from his slumber. <laughs> Tony O'Donnell, ladies and gentlemen, he just woke from a slumber. Yeah, he's busting his ass building that new smod castle. Yeah, uh, that looks uh, like it's going to be pretty cool looking. So hopefully, I can be able to do one of these there live with a live audience is always fun. So hey. that's right, boots, boots. We are it's San Francisco Bay represent. Henry yeah. from the UK is on. Good night, Mike. What's up there, brother? <laughs> Why am I doing Australian? This is so crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Henry, it's so nice to become reacquainted with Jeff Anderson now that he's back in the con circuit. Yes, it is really great to have Jeff back, uh, to be hanging out with him again. It's so funny because he's only done two shows, and then this coronavirus started happening. And mm. it was like, did did Randall bring the four horsemen of the apocalypse? And <laughs> don't tell people that's true. I that's kind of what my plan was, you know, because he loves gatherings, but he just hates people. What can we say? <laughs> I. Then, I uh, Go ahead. Well, I was looking. I'm I'm really looking forward, and I hope that um, you know things don't get delayed a little too much uh, because. Well, our that's. Right. I mean, not not to be selfish for our own needs, but that's pretty much everybody. Everybody's pretty much hoping. Oh yeah, yeah. It's going, and I'm and I'm sure that 
once they, the, the vaccine is made and, and, you know, if the social distancing, which is showing to show promise in California, especially and Washington state, um, New York state is, is doing it, but you know, people are still crowding on, on the, you know, the subway lines, the, the number two line, the number a line in Manhattan. And, you know, it's, crowded at 6 p.m. And that's because a lot of people in New York City um, don't have cars. Then the, you know, it's what's the greatest benefit about New York City is their mass transit system in this case is is becoming their their worst enemy right now because yeah. people still have to get to work. A lot of these people that don't own, own cars and vehicles are driving or shall I say are taking mass transit to get to their hospitals and their labs and their things like that. So, uh, cause taxi drivers aren't out, uh, Uber drivers are not out. They're not mm -hmm. considered essential. So, you know, unless you're hopping on the back of a garbage truck and it's going to be able to take you to the borough, you need to go. Uh, it's going to be hard. And to be honest with you, uh, they just brought in 300 ambulances into the New York city area from all over the country, uh, to handle the demand of people needing to be transported to hospitals. And right. now they're finally using the, uh, the Comfort, uh, the uh, USNS uh, Comfort uh, medical ship uh, to put COVID patients on because at first they weren't. They were just going to take regular patients out of the hospitals and just put them there who so that the hospitals can concentrate on COVID patients. But now they have to start taking COVID patients and the same thing with the Javits Center. Well, I, I saw, and I don't know if that was happening out here in LA or if that was in New York, but uh, a train conductor. Yeah. That was California. Yeah, that was, was out California. Yeah. Okay, tried to ram the 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 barge of the ship. Yeah. Meanwhile, like the tr it's funny because uh, Stephen Colbert uh, last night said the same thing. It's like you realize a train needs the track to go as far as you need to go for it to do what you need it to do. So it's not like the ship was laying across the tracks that he could ram it right. like a, tra a trailer at a bad you know train crossing. Yeah, um, that, that guy. I've seen a lot of movies. <laughs> Yeah, that guy was playing with 37 cards instead of 52. <laughs> yeah, maybe a little bit. <laughs> maybe. So we also had a, we also worked together slightly and on the same project, if anything, for this wonderful piece here. Uh, Shooting Clerks. Yes. The biopic of how Kevin made Clerks, made by the people who know Kevin best, Scotsman. That's right. These fans <laughs> up in Scotland got together. And uh, decided to uh, put a film together about the making of, of Clerks, and uh, it was Spooky. The the actor that they had uh, play me was Spooky, a handsome handsome man, by the way, uh, <laughs> just just like me. It, it was incredible. And there you are. There I is. Yeah, they put us all into different roles, and they had you uh, filming the part of um, Amy Taubin. Yes. Well, originally they wanted me to play Kevin's mom. And they were going to fly myself and Scott out to the UK or Scotland and uh, and do the roles out there. But it just became too cost prohibitive. So then yeah. uh, that was the thing with independent filmmakers is yeah. you need the funds to be raised for it. So, right. you know, well, we, you know, there's only so much that they can do to, to get to, to, to raise. And so and instead they were like, listen, let's just hire somebody locally in the States to go on and uh, be our U.S. camera crew and director and stuff like that. So yep. uh, we had a we had a great time. Thank you, David. Wonderful film. He said, "I'm glad you enjoyed it." Oh, we enjoyed he, it. he saw it. Yeah, he he came to a screening down in Atlantic Highlands, actually. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it was the one that Kevin attended too. Right. Yeah, I wasn't able to go. Um, mm -hmm. So I finally saw it uh, when uh, for San Diego Comic Con last year. So, I mean, <laughs> I, yeah. it's like as we were sitting there watching it, I could feel the eyes from Ryan and Chris right next to me. It's like when, um, you know, our scene came up or our actors reenacting the scene of us and in and, and shooting and all that kind of stuff, um, you know, because of the whole controversial uh talk about what i said um about jeff that it's so funny because you're the only one who thinks it's a controversy <laughs> well well yeah because it's you know it's it look here's the thing here <laughs> i've actually had people um berate me about it really oh absolutely after you they so jeff berated you i'm kidding no 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 um 
it's like, you know, people who would watch the 10th anniversary DVD and they would um, see watch that. The football effect, yep. Yeah. So then they would uh, message me and uh, give me a talking to, so to speak. Well, look, you know, <laughs> they're all being very nice to Jeff, but I've had friends or fans rather come up to me and be like, how is this guy not wanting to do Clark Stray and blah, blah, blah. I'm like, listen, man, we, it was not, has it has nothing to do with him personally. It was more of a contract thing that was insulting to everybody and blah, blah, blah. But, you know, getting back to it though, he's, he's really enjoying being on the con. I'm and glad he is. he's enjoying uh, the fact of meeting the fans and stuff like that. So mm -hmm. it's, a, you know, it's unfortunate though, that him coming out of his, a cave has plagued the whole world uh, with the coronavirus. Uh, <laughs> no, I can't I'm, wait till, uh, yeah, I can't wait till uh, we, you know, we get to uh, all be in the same room together and stuff like that. And for people who are kind of wondering, it's like why I, I'm not skating around it. It's like um, my brain just doesn't work sometimes. Um, but supposedly there were these things that I said when we uh, were in rehearsals for our clerks. And honestly, I can't remember them. And I saw Kevin about a month ago and he says he, he can't even remember the whole situation and stuff like that. And I, I told him, it's like, well, you know, it's like, I've had people, you know, curse me out about it. And he's like, really? And I'm like, oh yeah. <laughs> um, but, uh, you know, it is what it is. And it's, it's 26 years ago. 27, yeah. 27. Well, speaking of 26, 27 years ago, we get to reprise ourselves in this lovely piece. Yes, that was a lot of fun. I was so happy to be there and for, for many reasons, just to be there with you guys again and have that feeling again of shooting. And, and also it was a rough time in my life because my dad was sick and it kind of got a little touchy go there. And uh, so it was nice to have my family there to support me. Um, if people who haven't seen it yet, this is a, a reunion scene at a chronic con, a, uh, a con, a comic con, so to speak in Kevin's new movie, the new Jay and silent Bob reboot. So please, if you haven't seen it, it is free on Amazon or if you have Amazon prime, it is free. Mm -hmm. uh, so by all means, uh, I'm already getting solicitations from people who want to be on the show. That's hilarious. <laughs> That's good. Yeah. <laughs> who are they from? <laughs> He's watching us on the air. I mentioned his name earlier, and I'm just like, come on, man. I'm alive on the air. I see, but I have it on buzz, so it's buzzing. So I thought it was, you know, in this time of thing, you can't just turn your phone off because, you know, it could be your mom calling like, oh, my God, you'll never believe what happened. <laughs> the neighbor upstairs has the corona. Do you, want Rocky to say, do you want Rocky to say hello? Rocky saying hello. So we have a, so Rocky. Our, ah, Rocky's there. Three -legged he, decided, he decided to join us. Yeah, hang on. There you go. There he is. There you go. Rocky. So uh, he had uh, his uh, front, uh, leg. front left leg amputated a couple of years ago, about four years ago, uh, due to bone cancer, which is rare in cats. You just pulled the cord, which not. <laughs> So um, that's our one of our cats. Oh, Rocky. He's a good boy. <laughs> He's the only other guy in the house. It's me, uh, him, three other female cats. <laughs> Help me. <laughs> so that's, why I have to, that's why I have to have something to do, and that's where yeah. this is. I tell you, it's like right now, this is the time that I'm like, oh, God, I wish I had a pet, you know, to kind of keep me company. Although I'm not minding being home as an introvert i will say that um but you know i kind of wish i did have a dog i'm i'm a dog person um, as a former gamer uh and when i mean former gamer i like in my 20s i lost a lot of my 20s to gaming uh video gaming and stuff like that uh this was like psh, i've been preparing for decades for this type of stuff <laughs> I mean, where we can only go out for food and then come back and continue to game or whatnot. I'm like, right. done, done and done. <laughs> I'm like level 89 on that thing when it comes to that type of rank. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm sure there's a lot of our fans out here. Hey, Libby, filmmaker Libby McDurick. Meow. Libby says meow. Hi, Libby. <laughs> back to you. Great filmmaker here in the Pennsylvania area. Actually, I'm sorry. She's down in the Maryland area? Delaware? Maryland? I forget. My, my, my apologies. Tom, 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 uh, Kanan says, yo, Rocky. Hmm. 
Chris. Chris says, or I guess the viewers universe within the viewers universe trippy. True. That that was mm -hmm. definitely trippy in the scene of Jay and Silent Bob. Uh, right, right. Revisiting the view askew universe and whatnot. Yeah, I got about 15 minutes of sleep after we all wrapped before I had to head back to the uh, airport. You oh. were still you were still there for another what day or so? Um yes oh yeah, that's right because i had been there for a week what happened was this right. uh, i was fir i first flew down to new orleans which by the way big ups to the people in new orleans they are getting it hit hard and their hospital capacity is yeah. nowhere near what a major metropolitan city should be at um so their spike in cases of uh virus infection is plummeting i mean rather skyrocketing and uh uh, having Mardi Gras was not a helpful thing, um, unfortunately, but it's a big money maker for them. I'm but, surprised they still had it. Yeah, they did. Listen, and it's people from all over the wor world that come to it. So, you know, there are people in parts of different worlds that are like, ah, it doesn't matter. I'm coming to this thing. Mm -hmm. um, so anyway, uh, we were down in New Orleans. I went down there first for the very first scenes that I did, um, which were uh, the Dante, uh, the Dante scene outside of the quick stop. Uh, so no, you know, I don't want to do a spoiler alert, but, um, you know, it's, uh, I think it's, most, for the most part, it's safe to say, because a lot of these people must have seen it because <laughs> yeah. they're, uh -huh. they're the true fans. Right. So, uh, so I, we, they re they replicated the whole front of the store in front of this building that was, uh, down near the, the waterfront or not far from the waterfront. It's amazing uh, that they did that. Yeah, and this, here's the thing, like, see that tree on the left-hand side of the screen? Uh -huh. That tree is almost in the exact same space almost as the tree that's on the side of the real store down in uh -huh. Leonardo. It was just super duper duper spooky. And uh, I, <laughs> 20 minutes, for 20 minutes, me and Kevin spent just looking and going, can you believe this? I'm like, this is crazy. He's like, yeah, I, I totally wanted to do it up in New Jersey. And they were like, no, no, no. For cost effectiveness, it's just best if we just uh, do it here and stuff like that. And I was just like, really? And uh, and so we did that. And then there's the scene. Um, well, was that, was that an actual convenience store? Or what what kind no, of store? No, no, no. That's a fake. That's a fake wall in front of like an actual like auto garage or something. Oh, okay. But what they did is they uh, they they built you know they built this fake wall with the fake you know we, real shutters they connected to a fake wall okay. which was about three feet away from the real building but it was anchored to the building so it wouldn't fall obviously right so, and yeah they brought this over to um uh, to uh, WonderCon not WonderCon I'm sorry L A Comic Con correct and uh, when they were at L A Comic Con people could then take mm -hmm. photos uh with jay and bob because we were out there obviously promoting the hell out of it uh mm -hmm. with jay and bob in front of the whole thing but uh it was uh, it was really crazy you know uh to see it and you know and they put you know the the, the video store then became cox cox smokers and it was a really super duper a lot of fun and um, i'm really cool cool part about that whole thing was just the fact that we were able to get the essence that people really really thoroughly enjoyed about uh about doing clerks like they were all like yeah. so this is gonna be, you guys now have the set everything's gonna be on board we're gonna do this right and uh i was like I i'm totally there man let's do it you know and it was uh it was just so fun to be down there so i was down there shot these scenes first there's the cock smoker store uh, <laughs> went down there to shoot those scenes first and then they sent me home uh, because I actually had another event that I had to be at. Oh, okay. Uh, so then I was home for about a, well, not home, but not there for about a week and a half or so. Then they flew me back down um, because I then uh, had talked about doing another role. Sorry, I'm just trying to bring up the photos and I don't have a, I don't have a producer running the board. It's, it's me doing everything, people. <laughs> my first time so it's just me doing everything uh so then i went back down to do the grant hicks stuff and if uh if anybody's ever seen the, the grant hicks scene uh uh Anne and elizabeth and obviously um jay muse 
Uh, that was a lot of fun. I mean, just so much fun. So I went back down there. So I had the full, you know, Van Dyke goatee, whatever you want to call it for. Yeah. Dante. Uh, I then went back and shaved the bottom part and just kept the mustache for Grant Hex. And then, uh, as you saw in the other photos, um, for the reunion photo, especially, uh, I was clean shaven, if you see to the far left there, completely clean shaven, which I literally fooled Kevin. Kevin didn't recognize me. <laughs> guy. He was like, oh, holy shit. And I'm like, I know. Right? Well, like, that's how it was when we went to Sundance, because you had shaven it and nobody recognized you. And right. so we were walking around and people would recognize me. And then I'd be like, hey, and this is Dante. <laughs> right. And people were like, who? <laughs> and the guy in the convenience store and they were like no nah, that dude looks like he's 35 this guy looks like he's 15. <laughs> and so uh yeah it, it was that type of thing where i was like all right th that's that and that's the other thing and let's get let's do it on and see what happens and so uh so then you know when there was a scene here's a, <laughs> make an outtake from because it was a green screen because everything was gone shannon and jay and myself but uh it was just stupidly a lot of fun and if people haven't seen the film yet uh it's worth it it's a love letter to the fans um it's definitely worth seeing um it's, yeah. it's something that i think everybody will enjoy it was and fun it, it was, was fun. a lot of fun so yeah so i was there to shoot the um the grand hick scene and then when it, you you flew in and ernie flew in and scott mm -hmm. flew in and john flew in uh and obviously mike and ming and all those guys from comic book men yeah. flew down as well because now the convention scene was the convention scenes i think were all the last four days of shooting were all the convention scenes uh and then that's what they just instead of flying me home for just three days to fly me back it was just cheaper to just have me stay for three days and stuff right. so i just i would hang out and go down to the french quarter and have some really great food and whatnot so uh, it was a, a ton, a ton, a ton of fun. Yeah, which I, I, didn't, I didn't really get to enjoy New Orleans because <laughs> well, I was only there for the, the evening and then out. Yeah. Well, you know what it is? Um, I, I have a funny feeling that uh, you'll have the ability to go back there again uh, sometime soon. I mean, uh, a lot of filming. I mean, a lot of filming has been going on down there because they started to follow the Atlanta, Georgia model right. of giving away some really – some really, really great credits, uh, tax breaks to folks. So uh, I'm going to turn it over to uh, our fans, see if we have questions going on here. Nick, I sent you back your text, buddy. Hey, Matthew Rothblatt, good to see you, sir. What does he say here? Had a, I had the Dante goatee all through the 90s and the early 2000s. That is true. Right on, That's, sir. Oh, now, and now he's got the full on. <laughs> and now he's just full on Willem. He's got the Willem going on. <laughs> Definitely worth seeing Brian O'Holland. Thank you, Daniel. Good friend, Daniel Buckley. What do we have here? Uh, we shall have her maybe for something from really cool events. Yes, Tom. Uh, That'd Mar be awesome. <laughs> Great. Take her down to New Orleans. There is an event that you host down in New Orleans. We'll talk about it later in the year. Uh, okay. So uh, that'd be really good to go. What do we got? Casey says, love you both. Oh, we love you love too. Love you Casey. too, Ma. And Albuquerque. And Albuquerque. Yes. Albuquerque. Would be what fun about Albuquerque? He's saying to have us down at Albuquerque. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, Albuquerque's beautiful. I've been there a couple times now. What and I, I, have an, I have an agent in Albuquerque. Tina. Hi, in 1996, everybody grew a goatee because of Clerks. True. Yeah. Absolutely. Then, then but that was a trend, I think, before Clerks as well. I think, you know, it just then became nope. even more so. No. 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 Nope. It was funny because when I saw Ben, when I saw Ben Affleck uh, wearing it and chasing him, he's like, "Son of a bitch, took my look." It's like <laughs> a taller, slightly handsomer uh, Dante. That's not fun. I don't know because I remember seeing a lot of people wearing right. goatees. No, but I'm talking about pre yeah, while we were even shooting. Listen, I was wearing side sideburns, the long sideburns before mm -hmm. nine hundred two one zero and and Priestley was wearing them. <laughs> Because I was a big Morrissey fan, and Morrissey had them, and I was, and I just liked that whole. Obviously, I have the pompadour almost rocking tonight. The same thing. So. <laughs> yes, lots of filming, filming down in Albuquerque. That is right. Yes. Yeah. And what do we have here? We have uh, Mike Silk says uh, you were both awesome. We'll have to see what Kevin has in store for Clerks Three. That is true. I am yes. uh, looking forward to seeing what's going on in Clerks Three. Uh, he has been writing it uh, during this break that he got back from the uh, Jane Silent Bob Reboot Road show. So uh, I have not gotten the script yet, so we shall see. 
My favorite Kevin Smith film then uh, went to saw where it was shot. Kingsburg is my hometown. Oh, Kingsburg. Oh. Right? I'm so sorry. <laughs> Kid, it's Kingsburg. I did. <laughs> I'm sure he will. Uh, he will admit it as well. <laughs> yeah. uh, Nick, uh, <laughs> Nick, right underneath that, Marilyn is the best den mother in the world. <laughs> Love <Yeah>. you. <laughs> yeah, when the guys came out from uh, Scotland and, and Florida, who uh, shot and helped with the, the shooting clerks film, we had a screening at San Diego Comic Con this past yeah. uh, year. And uh, she was. They all got a uh, an Airbnb, and uh, she yeah. made sure that everybody kept to clean and and kept on track. And this is what we're doing next, and stuff like that. It's uh, like I, I I do kind of take on the role of mother when I'm with all those guys. <laughs> by the way, Amy Stark, who also currently resides in Keensburg, says, "I'm sorry." To <laughs> Very funny, Amy. Oh, Mo, love you, girl. Hey. <laughs> Mel, love you. Oh my God, you're gonna, you hit hair and makeup before. She's a good friend of mine. No, oh, well there. Well, come on. And uh, yeah, we actually uh, she uh, had her own little uh, short film that uh, was just doing the festival circuit and uh, hit a few festivals and won some uh, c um, prizes as well. Um, but uh, she's on her road to becoming a, a producer herself as oh, well right. as an actor. Well, yeah. Congratulations. Uh, Beth Longo says, love you both. Would love to have a clerk's event here in New Jersey. Well, we're at the Smodcast. That's they're, they're talking about it. Ernie O'Donnell. Okay. He's, uh, he's one in charge of that. And, uh, and then it goes down the chain, so to speak. And then Kevin goes, no, just me. I'm kidding. <laughs> um, but yeah, we're, 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 we're working on it. Roger Downs. I've known this, this kid since he was a little kid. Uh, sucks uh, that it took a worldwide epidemic, but good to see finally the, yes, the Hollerant is finally yeah. going because of a world epidemic. Uh, it's the last thing that uh, we're all going to watch, I guess. Uh, and by the way, it's yeah. like this, yeah, is look the, at this. this is the shirt that I recently started putting up on uh, my store. And some people were smart enough to purchase. <laughs> Here you go. Let me just uh, put that up there. That's Marilyn. There store. you go. For those looking for it, Marilyn dash gigliotti dot square dot site is the best way to do it uh once you log in it will look something like this so uh she's selling autographs and that t-shirt and a whole bunch of stuff mm -hmm. so, uh once again you want to go see marilyn gigliotti's square site for stuff and she's a uh, post office is open so she's stiff she's uh, shipping things out I don't, well, it's like, because I am a little compromised because I do have asthma. Um, I, I, and there's an order that I do have to send out, which is, uh, this as a, um, metallic print. Right. Um, but as soon as this is over, I, cause honestly, it's like, I'm, I've gone to the supermarket and Tuesday morning, I actually had to go and get a, an x-ray and CT scan, but it's like, I went and I did those things and I came right back and I'm like, I don't know what the post office is like. And so. And if you're looking <laughs> for her website, her website there, Marilyn Gigliotti dot Wixsite dot com forward slash Marilyn Gigliotti. Try to spell it with before you start drinking because you're going to get the, <laughs> the G's, the T's, the silent <laughs> H's. It's all going to be confused. <laughs> That's the site that you want to go to. For more of her stuff. All right, Marilyn. So uh, uh, we're gonna we're gonna wind this up, but I like to, to mm -hmm. end um, with. There we go. We're gonna do. What I'm gonna call the speed round Q and A. You Yikes. ready? For that? I guess so. <laughs> All right, speed round Q and A. I even got us some Q and A music. Brought to us by uh, Scott Schiaffo. So this one I enjoy. So uh, I'm going to play that now. All right. It's going to be our speed round Q&A. No, we're just a little bit. There we go. How's that? That's better. All right. Here we go. Speed round Q&A. Okay. Now I know that there's a there's a podcaster out there who has a thing called the one minute podcast, and it's very similar to this. And he 
he started it uh, the end of November, the beginning of November last year. And he's going to think I stole it from him. But actually, I had this idea a while ago, but I didn't want to tell him that. But <laughs> big props. If you want to go see the one minute, go go find the one minute uh, podcast. Here we go. Number one, New York or Chicago pizza? In New York. Okay. And by the way, this these questions mean throughout your life, not your current medical dietary restrictions. <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> That'd be the caveat because she does have certain dietary restrictions now, but I'm talking about in her entire life. Yes. Okay. Yes. Number two, coffee or tea? Tea. Hey. Number three, California or Jersey? Oh, man. Yeah. <laughs> Can't be both. <laughs> Just saying. Uh, well, you know what? Weather-wise, it's got to be here. <laughs> All right. Long flight or long drive? Long flight. All right. Pork or beef? Oof. Beef. Mashed potatoes or fries? Oof. <laughs> oh, damn. Um, Fries. All right. Highway or side streets? This is an L.A. question for those who don't get it. Highway. Here we go. Laugh or scream? Laugh. Booth or table? Booth. Comedy or drama? Depends on the mood I'm in. <laughs> mood you're in. Huh? What mood are you in? Uh, comedy. There you go. Dogs or cats? Dogs. Buying or selling? <laughs> Buying. Los Angeles or San Diego? Oh, San Diego. Love or money? Love. Soup or salad? Soup. Affleck or bail? Mm. Affleck. Oscar, Emmy, Tony, or Grammy? Oscar. Jay or Silent Bob? <laughs> oh, wow. Human status won't have to be affected by this. Relax. <laughs> Silent Bob. Dante or Randall? Dante. And I'm going to steal this from the now late Mr. Lipton. What is your favorite curse word? Fuck. Fuck, fuck. <laughs> we use it in plenty of time in uh, Clerks where I would be like, fuck, 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 fuck. <laughs> one ball? You came all this way for just one ball? The funny thing is, it's like seriously before Clerks. Never really cursed all that much. <laughs> For those looking to connect with the wonderful Marilyn Gigliotti, these are her social media sites. It is that clerk's girl on Twitter, Marilyn Gigliotti on Instagram, and on Facebook, Marilyn Gigliotti fan page. So please give her a look-see, give her a follow, give her some love. I've always enjoyed having her with me wherever I travel. She's always been a great comfort and joy. And she uh -huh. gets it. She just gets it. She didn't bring me any lasagna this time because we're on the <laughs> coast. I know a lot of people have been asking about it. Yeah. But I want to give a big thank you to my first guest here on the Ohala Rant, Miss Marilyn Gigliotti. Thank you so, so much for joining thank us. Thank you, oh. and you're welcome. Love and you guys. I want to give a big shout out to my lovely Diana Devlin, everybody. Hi. <laughs> we'll have more of you. She will be a part of more future broadcasts. I hope this worked out for you out there in the streaming land of YouTube and Facebook. Please follow us along here at The O'Hollerant as well. We are on Twitter and Instagram as The O'Hollerant. And also, uh, and we also have the Facebook page, The O'Hollerant. And uh, so look for more of that as well. Uh, hopefully I'm going to put this up uh, as a podcast, what you heard tonight on uh, SoundCloud as of right now, I think is going to be my outlet for that. So I will put up a link on my Twitter and Instagram and Facebook as well. So follow us all on that. I really, 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 really have enjoyed doing this. I hope you have. Things will get crazier. I have many different topics for those uh, who want to know what kind of topics. We're talking sports as well. We're talking comics. We're talking movies. Uh, we may get into some politics if shit get really it hits the fan. <laughs> uh, and some just other odd types of uh, really cool uh, guests. I have like about ten episodes of just you know podcast uh, audio that I've recorded over the years that are just sitting in a file 
that uh, I may broadcast as like the best of or classic cuts where we'll take That'd be seg- nice. Yeah. So uh, we're going to have a lot of fun with this. Uh, I look forward to interviewing some of our fans who are just uh, coming tonight and listening as to what was going on. Uh, I want to give a big uh, shout out to everybody who took time. Yes, Boots, we will stay healthy and ha- happy. You too. Thank you, Tony. Tony says a great job. Glenn, go Devils. Yeah, go home. <laughs> Ricky G, good to see you too as well. Yes, it's good to see your pepper as your icon. Wonderful dog. Nick, thank you so much. It was fun, man. Uh, we hope to uh, do more maybe with you as well in the future. And obviously, Chris has said, Diana, woot. Yeah, she is a bit of a woot. Woohoo! Hey, Chris. But, um, and another big uh, shout out to my buddy. You all know him and love him. Mr. Scott Schiaffo. Zing! Scott Schiaffo once again. <laughs> He is a man that has helped us out with a lot of this. I'm make sure I get his. Uh, Want to make sure I get his website back up there? ScottShiafo.com. Once again, you'll probably get confused with C's and H's and F's, but uh, if you're mm-hmm. Italian, it's Schiaffo. Scott Schiaffo. I'm going to have him on a guest in the next week or so. Uh, cool. We'll talk music. Uh, we'll talk a bunch of things. Uh, he does a lot of scoring for films as well. So if you're a filmmaker out there and you're looking for film score, by all means, this is the man you want to do it with. He is absolutely awesome. And uh, what we're going to do is we're going to start calling it here. Because people have lives. And I want to thank, once again... Got off there. So once again, thank you guys for sh- joining me. And yes, I was supposed to be here today. <laughs> Big round of applause for Marilyn Gigliotti. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in and for all your kind words. We love you. We love you, too. Thank you, everybody, and you guys have a good night. Stay safe. Remember, wash your hands, cover your face, uh, disinfect what you can, and uh, help each other. Check on your neighbors, especially the ones who are in compromised situations. Uh, You never know when their help to you will be needed. I want to give a big uh, shout-out again to the folks uh, at um, uh, uh, at StreamYard. StreamYard, I used StreamYard uh, for this broadcast which has been really, really great. Um, these guys up here, StreamYard up there, up, up there. It's a great, uh, they were the ones that has the program that could put up the comments and stuff. Um, it's a really uh, great site and also uh, really uh, cost effective too. Uh, I thought it was kind of really cool. And you can right. you can do a lot of different things with it and they can have up to five guests on a stream and stream it to multiple outlets like we did tonight to YouTube. A big shout out to YouTube. Oh, cool. You guys are awesome as well. Um, not personally, but I mean, uh, going through your level of uh, IT help was a lot of help. So uh, once again, uh, I don't know when I'll be back on. Uh, I'm going to try to figure out what regular day I'll do this and make it a weekly thing. I don't know, but I may just do it when someone says, yeah, let's do it. So um, it's kind of like my prom night. When they're like, yeah, let's just do it. Kind of. <laughs> uh, who, who am I kidding? I didn't go to prom. Um, <laughs> But thank you guys for joining. I'm going to sign off. Marilyn Gigliotti, we will see you thank again you. soon, hopefully. Stay safe. Wash your hands. You too. Yes, and, absolutely. Uh, don't trust any sketchy scams out there. <laughs> People getting their checks from the government. Make sure it's getting legit. Talk to yeah. you then. Bye-bye, folks. Bye. Thank you.